Lee Young Du holds nine black belts in various martial arts, including Taekwondo, Kendo, and Judo. Despite his impressive skills, he works as a delivery driver for his father's restaurant and enjoys spending time with friends and playing games. One afternoon, after completing a delivery, he witnessed a fight in an alley. He quickly intervened and found that one fighter was an ex-prisoner and the other a martial arts officer. When the ex-prisoner attacked him, Young Du easily subdued him. The next day, he received an exemplary citizen award from the Seoul Correctional Center. There, he met Kim Sun Min, the manager of the electric Electronic Surveillance Division, who explained that around 5,000 ex-prisoners nationwide wear electronic ankle bracelets due to their violent crimes and high likelihood of reoffending. Martial arts officers monitor them 24-7 using GPS. Kim mentioned that, due to an injured officer, the remaining team members were working 12-hour shifts for five weeks, which was quite demanding. Finding a random replacement was impractical. So Kim Sun Min suggested that Mr. Cho was impressed with Yong Du's ability to defeat an ex-convict and recommended he join their martial arts team. Eager to help protect innocent people, Yong Du accepted the role. While eating pizza, he discussed the demanding three-shift schedule with a friend who noted it could be exhausting. They recognized that the monitored ex-convicts were serious offenders, but his friend believed Yong Du could handle it. Jung Du then asked his father for permission to become a martial arts officer. His father supported his decision and assured him he would manage the restaurant in his absence. The next day, Jung Du started at the Seoul Correctional Center. Kim Sun Min introduced him to the team, explaining he would temporarily fill in for Mr. Cho, who was still in treatment. He also met senior officer Ha Dong Wan, who showed him how to use the tracking program. Mr. Ha explained that they could monitor ex-prisoners' locations on the office computer. If an ankle monitor's battery dropped to 30%, the icon would turn yellow, prompting Young Du to call the individual for a recharge. If they refused, he would need to go to their location. As Jung Du monitored the ex-prisoners, he felt drowsy when an icon turned yellow, indicating Lee Young Hu, an ex-convict involved in a sexual crime. Jung Du called Young Hu twice with little response, and on his third attempt, found the phone inactive. Jung Du and Mr. Kim quickly went to Young Hu's location. Upon arrival at the housing complex, Jung Du recognized the area from his delivery routes and noted Young Hu's house lacked iron bars, indicating an easy escape. While Mr. Kim entered the house, Jung Du waited outside. Inside, Young Hu was about to assault a woman. When Mr. Kim knocked, he heard her scream for help and knocked harder. Realizing he was caught, Young Hu grabbed a knife and tried to escape through the window. As he jumped out, Young Du was ready and subdued him with a kick and a taser. Later, while monitoring the computer, Young Du received a notification about another ex-prisoner, Lee Jong-in, whose suspicious movements near a childcare facility prompted an investigation with Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim had planned to treat Young Du to roast pork, but since Jung Du had plans with friends, they agreed to eat together later. During their meal, Kim shared his motivation for working in martial arts to help reduce recidivism and create a safer environment for children. Meanwhile, assistant manager Yoon Dong-ju got a notification that Han jun gus ankle monitor battery was at 30% and his phone was off. Dong-ju informed Mr. Kim, leading them to Burindong. They also learned that another ex-convict, Min Do-wung from Seorindong, was unresponsive after curfew. Since Mr. Kim was in Seorindong, he went to find Min Do-wung. Upon arrival, he discovered that Min Do-wung's anklet had been cut, making tracking difficult. Fortunately, Young Du's friend, Moisture, helped with his drone. Using the drone, Mr. Kim located Min Do Wung walking alone in an alley. Yong Du was eager to chase him, but Mr. Kim cautioned him to be careful since Min Do Wung had a knife and advised him to use earbuds for communication. After tracking him with the drone, Jung Du confronted and defeated Min Do Wung in a duel. Min Do Wung then threatened suicide with his knife, expressing anger over being teased about his ankle monitor. He revealed plans to kill his friend before taking his own life. When Jung Du returned home, he told his father about his kind manager. Meanwhile, his father was watching the news about Kang Ki Yong, a notorious sex offender about to be released, raising concerns about his high risk of reoffending against children under 13. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim and his colleagues were strategizing to monitor Kang Ki Yong. 
they plan to create three teams of probation officers, including Young Du, and a martial arts officer for each shift. Each officer would oversee over 20 ex-convicts, making it challenging to track Kang if he were added to the list. After getting a haircut at his aunt's barber shop, Young Du saw Kim Gum Nam, an ex-sex offender, inappropriately tipping a waitress. He reported this to Mr. Kim while checking Gum Nam's suspicious location on the computer. They decided to investigate but encountered a signal blackout, forcing them to search manually. They asked local shopkeepers for information, but it was unreliable. Fortunately, Young Du confirmed that his aunt's barbershop was safe. However, Kim Gun Nam entered Sun Jun's barbershop, locked the door, and attempted to assault Young Du's aunt. Sensing trouble, Young Du rushed back, found the shop closed, and realized his aunt was in danger. He broke a window, he rescued her, and subdued Kim Gun Nam with handcuffs. The next morning, Young Du's father made him breakfast and shared his love for acting, describing the joy he felt in making others happy. At the correctional facility, staff held a meeting where Miranda announced that two supervisors would be sent to monitor Kang Ki Young, and the finance ministry had approved funding for two more martial arts officers. However, they were denied additional manpower for the third shift. Kim stressed the importance of daytime officers, noting that 14 of Kang's 15 offenses occurred during school hours and requested to work the day shift. Inspired by his father, Young Du asked Mr. Kim if he could work permanently as a martial arts officer. Mr. Kim agreed, informing him he would join the team monitoring Kang Ki Young in 10 days. Meanwhile, Big TV reported Kang Ki Young's release after serving 20 years for sexually abusing 15 children. He would wear a GPS enabled tracking device for the next 10 years. The next day, Young Du, Mr. Kim, and their team went to Jeonan Penitentiary to install Kang's electronic anklet. Mr. Kim warned him not to tamper with it, as he would be under constant surveillance. Afterward, police escorted Kang home, but a large protest was occurring along the route, with demonstrators calling for his castration and death sentence, arguing that punishments for rapists in Korea were too lenient. That night, security officers patrolling the area near Kang's house noticed a change in the atmosphere since his release. Kang's imposing presence made residents uneasy. Meanwhile, a man named Byung Soon secretly entered Kang's home, gifted him a trendy jacket, and informed him that the ankle monitor wouldn't detect movement inside. Byung Soon, who had worn one for three years, explained that it allowed movement within 10 meters, with unreliable GPS, and seemed to propose a project involving adult content creation. The next day, Young Du spotted Mr. Kang and asked Mr. Kim for permission to follow him. Him, worried about potential trouble. He took a taxi to a shopping center, but lost track of Kang while searching for English and piano classes. Meanwhile, Mr. Kang met Cho Min in a car. Cho Min, who distributes specific videos on the dark web, offered Kang 10 million won for each 10-minute video featuring children. Byung Soon would help with recording and editing, while Cho Min would find the children. Unbeknownst to them, Young Du was nearby, but couldn't see inside the car due to tinted windows. He noted the license plate and informed Mr. Kim that he had lost track of Kang. Mr. Kim called Kang, but by then, Kang had already exited the car and was heading to a kimbap depot. Young Du reported Kang's location to Mr. Min, who wondered why Kang chose that depot when there were closer options. Later, a girl named Min Ju found a puppy by the road but was quickly taken hostage by an unknown assailant. Meanwhile, Lee Young Hu met with Byung Soon and Mr. Kang to plan the video project, receiving a bonus down payment. Min Ju noticed that Lee Young Hu's phone battery was at 30% and his phone was off, so she informed Mr. Kim, mentioning that Young Hu lived in Seorindong but was currently in Dongruendong. Mr. Kim then contacted Young Du to see if he and Min Ju could find Young Hu. As Young Du continued to monitor Mr. Kang, Mr. Kim, and Min Ju arrived near Young Hu's location. Suddenly, they heard a cry for help, which turned out to be a trick from a speaker belonging to Young Hu. They were confronted by Young Hu and his friends, and, despite attempts to escape, were outnumbered. Young Du followed Mr. Kang into an abandoned shopping building. As he tried to exit through a hallway, he was trapped by Kang's men. Ambushed from behind, he was beaten up but used his skills to defeat several attackers, causing some to flee. He attempted to contact Mr. Kim, but his calls went unanswered, leading him to decide to find Mr. Kang on his own. Meanwhile, Mr. Kang and Byung Soon were preparing to film a video with an underage girl. 
Young Du eventually tracked down Kang and approached the building. Noticing footprints leading to the basement, he followed them and knocked on a door, but no one answered. Instead, he heard a woman's voice asking for help inside. When there was no response, Young Du broke a side window and asked a nearby resident to call the police. Once inside, he was attacked by Byung Soon. Exhausted from the struggle, he managed to defeat him but was then stabbed by Mr. Kang. Fortunately, he was wearing a stab-proof jacket. Shortly afterward, the police arrived, but Mr. Kang and his accomplice escaped. Later, Young Du's family visited him. His father was shocked and saddened, regretting that Young Du had been in such a perilous situation. A few days later, Young Du attended Cho Min's funeral. He also participated in the Brave Citizen Awards ceremony, where he met Minju's aunt, who mentioned that Minju had left a thank you letter for him. Minju was still too scared to leave home and haunted by dreams of the incident, but hearing about Young Du gave her hope. The next day at the office, Young Du told his friend that Minju was still traumatized. Mr. Kim suggested handing Mr. Kang's case to the police, since neither he nor Young Du were fully recovered. However, Young Du took the initiative to search for Mr. Kang with his friends. Jun Do remembered a black Range Rover with tinted windows from their search. Using its license plate number, his friend tracked the car's location. After preparing their equipment, they arrived at a house, and although moisture failed to break the key code, the owner eventually opened the door, allowing them to enter. Inside, they confronted Cho Min, the owner of a pornographic video business. Moisture accessed Cho Min's laptop and discovered over one terabyte of child sexual abuse videos. While interrogating Cho Min about Mr. Kang's whereabouts, he remained uncooperative. Eventually, Jun Do found a text message on Cho Min's phone that revealed Mr. Kang was at the Chinese pavilion. Young Du and his friends drove to the location. Upon arrival, Moisture set up his drone, while Young Du put on the tactical gloves he received from Cho Min. Young Du and his friends split up to search for Mr. Kang. They showed residents a photo of him. One friend, near Daewon Motel, Young Du peeked inside and confirmed that Mr. Kang and his men were there. He instructed his friend to return to the car and then confronted Mr. Kang and his crew. However, Mr. Kang was clever. While his men fought Young Du, he escaped. Young Du asked Moisture to follow Kang. After defeating Kang's men, Young Du, guided by Moisture, tracked down Mr. Kang. A fierce fight ensued, but Kang was strong and armed with a knife from a butcher's shop, overpowering Young Du. Just when Young Du was about to be overwhelmed, Moisture crashed his drone into Mr. Kang's eyes, giving Young Du the chance to defeat him and put him in handcuffs. The next day, Young Du and his friends received an award from the Korean president, with Mr. Kim present. During the ceremony, Min Ju, the girl Young Du had saved, approached him to express her gratitude for saving her life. 